Hi, folks. Tom Ballas here with Base Gear Magazine, and I once again have the chance to chat with uh, Robbie Takak from Goo Goo Dolls. So, Robbie, thank you for spending some time with us today. Yeah, it's good to be with you, man. Uh, when we last chatted, it was back in two th- late 2019, you know, the, the before <laughs> times. <laughs> and we talked about Miracle Pill, and, uh, and man, what a great album that was. I really enjoyed uh, that album a lot. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't feel like that record got its uh fair due, man. We didn't get a chance to bring it around the country like we normally do. So, but we're playing some of it now and stuff. So cool. I was going to ask that. Cause I know like at the time you, you guys had plans to do a big tour and you're, you're going to play what, like the whole album on, on, on the tour. And that probably didn't happen right because of COVID. <laughs> Yeah, you know, things slowed down a little bit <laughs> to, to a uh, uh, stopped crawl. Yeah, it was horrible. Uh, y- yeah, you know, I mean, we kept busy. You know, we uh, recorded, uh, you know, we did a Christmas record and we did, uh, uh, we recorded a record and a half worth of music, uh, you know, during the pandemic. So, you know, I mean, we got a lot done, uh, did some broadcasts and, uh, stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, nothing, uh, compares or, or, yeah, I mean, nothing holds a candle to being out there and actually, you know, sharing your music with people. Um, given your preference, like how much of the time would you be on tour versus back at home? Uh, if I could go home every night. Yeah. That'd be nice. (laughs) Yeah. uh, I would do it every day, you know? Um, I don't know. You know, I mean, we tour a lot when we tour, you know, uh, we go out for, you know, three, four months and then we'll come home for a few weeks and go back out again, you know, and we'll do that for a while uh, before we take some time off. So uh, with all the time that we took off, I'm sure we're going to be pretty busy, you know, for the next little bit here, you know, there's plans I mean, we're already booking next summer now. So, right. Yeah. Um, speaking of time at home, uh, how's your daughter doing? She's doing great, man. She's doing great. She's in Japan with her mom right now and cool. they're coming back in a couple of days and then they're going to come out on tour with us for about a week. And, oh, very nice. Yeah. Man. She's what, around 10 years old now. 10 years old, man. Oh, cool. 10 years old, heading careening towards 11. <laughs> <laughs> now does, does she realize how cool her dad is or are you just like, just, <laughs> just, just dad? No, nah, I think I'm just dead. I think I'm just dead. I, you know, I mean, you know, it, you know, she's aware, you know, of what we do, you know, she's, uh, you know, I, 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 I sort of remember, you know, like, uh, when it dawned on her, you know, that my <laughs> band was, was, was notable, you know, like I could see, you know, her, her teachers, you know, like playing our songs in their classrooms <laughs> and stuff like that, you know? And, uh, so uh, she got it, you know, but you, you know, she grew up with it and, right. you know, much like, you know, the touring situation, you know, when you, when you, um, you know, start touring or uh, when you stop touring, you know, it's such a disruption, you know, to your life, you know, because your life is sort of set up to have touring in it. You know, um, I didn't expect that so much, you know, like I didn't realize I was going to be a byproduct of, you know, I mean, some great things happened. You know, I got to grow tomatoes and stuff, you know, uh, you know, I, I haven't done that in years. I've been home summers, you know, and, you know, decades. So, you know, I mean, it really is a pretty exciting, you know, you know, it's a pretty exciting, uh, byproduct, you know, of a horrible, you know, thing, you know, that happened, you know, with the pandemic, you know, is that I was able to actually spend some time at home and spend some time with my family and stuff. So, you know, but, um, yeah, you know, being out of the cycle and such was crazy, but you can really feel, when you're out there playing, you know, we just did a show at Red Rocks, man. It was like almost, it was very close to religious, man. Uh, you know, a friend just, of mine was at that show. A friend of mine just sent me some pictures and text from that show, man. What a great venue, man. I'm just telling you, like you can just feel people's hunger and, 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 and yeah. you can feel them being satiated. You know, it was like, <laughs> it was awesome. man. It was great. It was great. Oh, very, very cool. Um, 
Well, we should talk about the uh, the new album. You know the, the, yeah, the yeah. work that you and John put. You know in that that downtime. Yeah. Um, you've got your now thirteenth studio album, Chaos and yeah, Dream, that's going to come out August twelfth. Um, I was fortunate to get a chance to you know, listen to it uh, ahead of time, and uh, man, oh, great, great album. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah. We uh, yeah, like I said, you know, we locked ourselves up in a old church uh out in woodstock uh new york was out in the woods and uh you know we we uh we hadn't you know because of the pandemic um you know there weren't a lot of people around you know it was just basically a couple engineers uh in the band you know and we were just kind of in there playing every day and and making music and there weren't like you know, folks in the record company popping in and out, and, you know, like, uh, you, you know, like all the hustle and bustle, you know, of, of life in LA or New York, where we usually make our records, you know, no it's distra- like just no busy. And, huh? yeah. yeah. And the industry was kind of closed down and, and, you know, and everybody was just kind of waiting for the vaccine to come. And yeah. so, you know, we, yeah. So we just got a chance to just kind of sit and be, I don't know, like just kind of be us in there making music. And that was kind of, you know, it was kind of exciting. We hadn't done that in a lot of years. So, you know, and, um, you know, and, and also John, uh, John and, and uh, Brad from our band and a couple of other of our, of, of our friends helped as well. Uh, but John, you know, mainly produced this album. So, you know, most of our records, were sort of made under time constraints and this right. one sort of wasn't, yeah, we were sort of locked out for a few months. And, and this you know, is the we first just, time that, that John produced a full album, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, we, John and I have produced with folks before, you know, like uh, we, you know, we produced, uh, uh, you know, like we co-produced Dizzy up the girl with, with uh, Rob and stuff, you know? So, you know, there was, there was, always that we were always involved in that end of it, but, you know, producing a record entails an awful lot of stuff, you, you know, that, that, uh, you know, we weren't necessarily involved with as well. So, but I think the main thing was most producers don't have a year and a half to spend making a record, you know, just out of sheer, reality, you know, of they've got other records to make, you know, they've got the, you know, they've got, uh, you know, the lives, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but we were, you know, we were able to do it, you know, John was able to do it at his own pace this time. And so I feel like he got to really spend some time with the songs and, you know, become intimate with the songs and, you know, I think you can hear that in the, Period you do, of yeah. The process. I, yeah. I hear the, the, a definite consistency too. Um, you know, in in the production value, the songs themselves are, are quite diverse. But uh, you know, compared to I think Miracle Pill, you guys work with like four different producers, and you know, yeah. there are some very definite kind of moods that you know the production you know spins uh, on those different songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. You know, like I said, you, you know, they and there's still another six six songs, I think that, that we have, that we haven't, uh, uh, used for the oh, record wow. yet. So, you know, yeah. So we're well on our way, you know, to another album right now as well. And, and all the songs are great. Like they're all, it wasn't, it wasn't like we didn't put them on because we didn't think they were good. You know, we just had to pick 10 songs, you know, to right. make a record. So, yeah. Well, now you, you told me with, when we talked in 19 that you guys had a lot of leftover songs from the Miracle Pill album also. Did, did any of those make it on to, to this one or, or not? Uh, uh, oddly, no, they didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, they didn't. I, well, no, actually, that's not true. Uh, a couple of them were reworked. Okay. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't bring the tracks in. Uh, and, and, but a couple of them were reworked into other things. So, so yeah, they, they, there were some things that were, that were revisited from that record. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I, I like the real, you know, the positive kind of upbeat vibe, you know, from, from Miracle Pill, I think, you know, carries over in the, the chaos and bloom. And, um, 
as we discussed before, you guys have a great ability to take even kind of difficult, sometimes depressing topics and mm -hmm. kind of present them in a way that's digestible intellectually in a positive fashion, you know? And yeah. I'm, wondering if, I'm hoping that that helps some people maybe get through these past, you know, couple of years and a half that were kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we were making the record, it was a crazy time. Like, you know, the, whole George Floyd thing happened yeah. and, you know, and the whole BLM thing happened and like everybody was waiting on this like vaccine and nobody was working. And like the government was like interjecting cash, like everywhere. And like, like it, it was just, just such a crazy time, you know, really. Um, I don't even think we understand what a crazy time this has been. Right. Like I think 10 years from now, we're going to look back and go, <laughs> Oh my God. What was it that we all just lived through? You know, um, you know, I, it, it's tough to judge, you know, the effect something's had, you know, in the moment, but, you know, but I, I think, you know, that all figured into, you know, what was put out on this record, you know, I think, you know, it's, you know, it's got a, it's got a little bit more of a chaotic feel to it, I think, you know, uh, and, and, uh, you know, I mean, I think lyrically, you know, if you, use your imagination a little bit, you can tie, you know, an awful lot of stuff to, you know, what's gone on over the past few years. Right. Right. Um, well, digging into the album a, a little bit, I know, um, yeah, I like you is the, the single that that's out. Right. And, and man, that, that's just one of those tunes that just gets its hooks in you like right in the first 20 seconds, you know, um, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've been leading the show off with that actually mm -hmm. uh, uh, on this tour, and uh, it's it's been going over really well. So, you know, a little bit of a brave move, you know, to open up with your new single, but yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's been working for us. Yeah, and I, I really dig uh, uh, day after day, and you know, I have to say that that kind of three note piano riff that kind of r repeats it, it works so well, you know, you know, you, I would think to yourself, it's going to come on, can you keep doing the same riff, but you know, the, the, the drums behind it, make it change and the other accenting instruments make a change. And I just really find that song stuck in my head. I really like it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's a good one for sure. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, uh, like I said, you know, there was a, we had a, we had the time to spend on, on, on vibe on this record, you know, and I think that that's, you know, I think it's pretty evident. And, uh, going crazy is another great one. Um, you know, yeah. the first, the first couple of seconds, I'm like, Oh, cool. A punk tune, you know, and then it kind of yeah. changes into some other things too, but it's got like that really driving, you know? Yeah. 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 That's another one we've been playing live too, actually. Uh, we've been, we've been doing that one and, uh, yeah, it just it kind of reminds me of kind of like some of the older stuff we used to do when we were kids, you know. So it's uh, you know, it's got a lot of got a lot of spunk, man. <laughs> very, very nice. Um, I also liked how, and I think you did this on some past albums too, where you you kind of take some almost vintagey sounding guitar tones and whatnot, and and layer them over some more like electronic type of uh, you know background mm -hmm. music, and, and it really blends nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Mahobrek. I don't, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Jamie or not, but Jamie, uh, he's a, a keyboard player that's played with, oh my God, everybody seal. And I don't know, the list is too long, you know, I, um, but, uh, yeah, he came in and added some really great stuff and, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. I, you know, like it's amazing. Like, uh, John's really into, you know, and, and our engineer, Chris, like they're really into the, like the classic recording techniques and, you know, the warmth and microphones and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, like we've been lucky enough to work with some folks over the years that have really introduced us to, you know, some of some pretty modern record making ways as well. So, you know, I think to the, to marry those things and, and still try to keep like a classic sound, you right. know, I think is, 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 you know, what we sort of aim for, you know, um, you, you know, there's some really great stuff about, you know, the, the depth and, and, and the starkness about stuff that's on the radio these days, you know, like a lot of, uh, a lot of space, 
right. you know, on, on stuff and, and, you know, a lot of experimenting with that kind of stuff. And, you know, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, marrying those things together and, you know, sort of trying to keep that classic sound of, you know, of what, what Google Dolls is, which you know, largely comes with John's voice, quite honestly. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, um, and, and, and dropping acoustic guitars over all this stuff too, which is a whole nother thing. Right. You know? Well, past mistakes was one of the tunes that I really kind of saw that, mm. you know, really cool vintage guitar, you know, riff. Uh, with the yeah. Backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Same thing, you know, just, you know, finding that, yeah, just finding that place, you know, you know where it's right, you know, and, uh, yep. you know, I think, you know, you find those vintage sounds and it really uh, uh, helps that along for sure. And you're, you know, finding the right fit for the song too goes along with your various bass lines. You know, the, you're, you're really playing some very different bass lines on the different songs, you know, with, with what each song calls for. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, going crazy, I really liked, but another one that stood out to me was, um, uh, on you are the answer. Uh, I feel like you kind of had like some, some very tasty bass tones there with maybe some. Oh, no, yeah, no, that that's, that's actually John button. You know who that is? Really? Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's John button playing bass on that song. John played on, um, uh, our Chris stand up bass on our Christmas album. Okay. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's actually John button playing on that song. He, he plays with the who actually. Is it on, on upright or is he playing the bass guitar on that one? No, no, no. Regular bass. Uh, uh, right. Fretless, actually. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I was yeah. like, wow, this is a really different tone than Robbie. Yeah, yeah. no, so, okay, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's definitely not me. Well, Superstar, <laughs> that was you? Yes, 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 okay. yes. So, yes, so yes. Superstar was one that, you know, I always like when, when the bass and the drums kind of present kind of like one rhythmic voice or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that really was at the next level. I felt like on. Super yeah. Star. Well, you know, that's, that's how uh, most of this record was kind of assembled. Quite honestly, um, we would wake up in the morning and, you know, we'd work all day and then, uh, I'd wake up in the morning with Craig and, you know, we'd all go have breakfast together and the two of us would go in and just start playing and just start playing and playing and playing. And, you know, most of the songs were born, from that, you know, um, you know, uh, John would come in with, you know, an idea, you know, I'd come in with an idea and then we just sit in there and play all morning until we got something that felt solid, you know, and if it felt solid and we could move on from there. Not that we wouldn't redo it at some point, but like, you know, that was like where the structure of the song, if that felt right, then, you know, we would move on. So, you know, we really spent a lot of time, you know, uh, working on that. Like I said, you know, the old, not the old, the way that we had made our last couple of records, you know, they were very producer based records, you know, guys would come in and we'd work with them. So we come in and sort of not know the song and, you know, sort of just work on, you know, that, 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 that sound good, you know, and, and, you know, it'd sound great, you know, and you'd be done. And, but, you know, you didn't have a chance to, you know, sit with and live with this song for a while and, you know, groove with another guy with it. Cause they're, cause the drums are already done, you know, like, right. right. Yeah. And so, you know, we got a chance to really feel like what it would feel like when we played together. And, uh, so I think you can really hear that. All you um, do is shows. That's yeah, awesome. On the record. Yeah. Yeah. How, how long did you guys take to, re- to record the, the, the tracks for this one? Well, the basic tracks were done in about, two and a half months, the, Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the, the mass of, of the songs. And then John worked for uh, probably another year on and off, you know, on it afterwards, you know, singing and overdubbing and (laughs) hating, hating and reliking stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So, you know, we spent a little bit of time and, and, uh, you know, and then it took a little bit of time to mix too. So the record actually came out a little later than we had hoped quite honestly, but, um, gotcha. yeah. yeah. Um, did you make any, uh, changes to, uh, either the instruments or the gear that you're using either in the studio or on, on the tour since uh, we last talked? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I had since, uh, bought a, uh, a upright. So I, I played a little upright on, on this record, which we, which I, uh, had never done before. So that was just, uh, kind of fun. Uh, we, yeah, we used a K 
on pretty much, I would say probably 60% of the record with uh, flat wounds, man. Um, which we've never done before. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of stuff on, 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 uh, um, uh, Hoffner, uh, our, our, um, engineer had a, a, like a club base that, uh, we used on a lot of it, which was pretty cool. Um, a lot of the bass was recorded through like an old fender. I think it was, uh, I want to say it was a twin. Um, but very low volume. Like we weren't blowing the room up with the bass too much. Mm-hmm. You like, um, but when we were done, we were quite often run like a distortion track afterwards, you know, right. um, you know, through a loud amp in the room later on. But like, as we were tracking, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty under control. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think we used anything that different. We tracked all the, all the, uh, basics, pretty much everything, but vocals and solos and stuff to, uh, tape and then dumped it back into digital. Oh, really? Which, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Which was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> personally, I'm not sure if, if, if the reward is worth, you know, the, the, the task, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, man. Um, you know, and I commend the guys for doing it, you know, for sure. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, we did a little bit of that. Um, no, but you know, uh, Aside from that, you know, it's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Still playing the Yamaha's live mostly. Yeah. Playing the Yamaha's live, uh, uh, loving it. We have, uh, I have a B rig. Well, we have three rigs. We have, uh, our A rig, which is, you know, my, I have, a amp eggs and, uh, I, I used to use a sans amp, uh, but I switched that out and I use uh, a, a fractal yep. now instead of the sans amp, which is pretty awesome. It's it actually become a, probably the main part of my sound, quite honestly. Now, um, those are there that what they do to a bass is unbelievable. It's amazing how good and, they are nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, I switched that out. Uh, yeah. And that's what's on my Yamaha bases. And then, uh, uh, we have a B rig, which is kind of like a smaller version of our a rig where everybody's playing through fractals. So when we go overseas, we use those so we don't have to ship all our cabinets and all that kind of stuff overseas. Uh, and, but that's still with all the Yamahas. And then we have a C rig, which is, uh, I use, uh, those Godin bases. Yeah. Which are, yeah, which are the, it's, it's like a MIDI base and play into those GR 55 units, which I can't say enough good things about. It's like, really? I almost forget I'm using it. Like it's, it's trade it tracks that well, like it's, it's unbelievable. So and those and have been on a like, while too, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if they make them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think they do. Um, but I, I bought many of them though, because, uh, it's, it's really uncanny how well they work. And I'm sure there's other units that do the same thing now. Um, I just happened. Yeah. I just happened to use that one and, uh, you know, it's all programmed and we, you know, you know, all my tunings, you know, like, like, uh, when we do our live shows on a rigs, I have, you know, eight bases, you know, you know, three tunings and then a swing tuning with backups for everything. If we travel with our C rig, I travel with two guitars, you know, because, because I can change the tunings on the GR 55. So that is cool. yeah. Yeah. So it's really, you know, it, it makes our pack, you know, we can literally pack everything on an airplane, you know, and then go do a show somewhere and you know, with rented drums. So it's cool. Well, very nice. Um, yeah. well, uh, before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you quickly about uh, music is art. How, how's that going? And I, I know you have another festival coming up in September. Ooh, yeah. 20th year this year, man. Um, yeah, it's exciting. We're, uh, yeah, we have uh, 24 stages. We have uh, uh, P. Lander Z coming in from uh, uh, Austin, Texas. It's a, a Japanese superhero band. They're pretty awesome. Uh, 
uh, we have uh, our, our uh, infringement area, which is all uh, performance artists and, and uh, kind of avant-garde artists is expanding this year. We're, we moved over into another park as well. So, uh, you know, the footprint's expanding. We have a skate park going on this year. So, yeah, so a lot of really fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's right in the middle of uh, our tour, of course. So, uh, yeah, so uh, that's going to make it even more exciting. <laughs> but it's Are our you 20th be year. Or, or no? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Oh. I'll be there. I'll be there. And then, yeah, I'll be there a few days before it, too. So it'll be, uh, cool. and then it's, and then it's, back to the grindstone right away so <laughs> when is the tour <laughs> two days later uh we just extended it through november now oh, cool yeah so we got a couple weeks off in october and then uh we go back and and tend to uh put another show together that'll be more aimed towards theaters for for about another uh uh i think it's some a, a month i think yeah and then we wrap up in december and got a couple of privates to do and then we start back in in February. So. Cause you, uh, you guys are hitting a lot of really cool outdoor venues on this tour. It looks like, right. Yeah, man, this tour has been so awesome, man. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, I mean the, yeah. Then the crowds have been great. And the venues have been amazing and it's been a little hot a couple nights, but, yeah. but, but aside from that, it's, it's, it's been really great, man. Well, I'm hoping to see you on August 10th at Nautica in Cleveland. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Awesome, man. Oh yeah. That's always a good one. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, Hey, it's great talking with you and, you know, starting on August 12th, people can pick up a copy of Cass and Bloom. You can pre-order it now on Warner records. I think on your, on the Google dolls website too, I believe. And, uh, you got great- it great album and uh if you don't have it everybody should pick up miracle pill that's a fantastic album as as well awesome brother awesome awesome thank you so much for chatting man thank you good talking to you have a a good rest of the tour all right take care bye